Hematologists are continuing their education by learning new methods for diagnosing and treating AML. AML was diagnosed in approximately 20,000 people in the United States in 2016, and of those patients, more than half will die from the disease. Recently, there have been significant advances in the diagnosis and management of AML. Treating it is a collaborative effort, which includes nurses. This is how they are adapting to the rapid advancements of drug therapies. Our clinical and our bedside nurses, the, the, the approach um, remains consistent in that we want to make sure we're focusing on supportive care, symptom management. Um, while some of these agents may carry different side effects, um, our IDH2 inhibitors, um, we focused on our presentation associated with differentiation syndrome and not necessarily as myelosuppressive as other um, leukemia agents. So I think it's important for nurses to understand what specific side effects of some of these newer agents are um, because we still have such a focus on that symptom management and um, supportive care element for the patient. Speaking of myeloid malignancies, the scientific committees on myeloid biology and myeloid neoplasia discussed clonal evolution in this joint session. The vast majority of patients aren't monitored for clonal hematopoiesis, but that is changing rapidly. I think the question of how we can use our understanding of clinical hematopoiesis to affect clinical medicine is an outstanding question. The more we see on a scientific level what's going on, the almost harder it is to think about how to treat people. And to me, uh, makes me stand back and it's amazing how many people we can cure when we see the complexity that's going on. Dr. Dan uh, Link presented some work on uh, the effects of chemotherapy on clonal evolution. So this is an emerging area. Uh, there was a, pub a paper that was published earlier suggesting the impact of uh, smoking uh, on uh, clonal evolution. And, and so I think moving forward in the next year or so, we're going to have a lot more uh, detailed information in regards to what is the impact of inflammation, uh, such as inflammation in the form of obesity, in the form of smoking, uh, maybe perhaps even arthritis, some of the other inflammatory diseases. Do these patients tend to have more clonal uh, evolution going on than uh, otherwise in the normal popula aging population?